Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we're going to talk about sewing anxiety and procrastination. <laughs> so, Mom, do you have any experience with sewing anxiety or procrastination? I'm sure I do. I'm going to have to think about this. Of course I do. Um, I think especially something you haven't made before. I always worry about the fit. Mm-hmm. I always worry yeah. about... Am I going to make it and not like the way it fits or like the not like the way it looks on me? I don't tend to procrastinate about things that aren't going to go on my body. Like, I can make a purse or bag, and that doesn't seem to bother me. I think people will feel really reassured when they hear you, like, having being a person with so much sewing experience, having a little bit of anxiety just a little bit maybe yeah. every time you make yeah. a, a garment, you know. And, and and not even always, I guess. It just depends. Um, but I think mostly it's a garment that I've never made before or I've, I'm have i changing something. Uh-huh. I the garment. Or making it for someone else. I think that uh, we talk about how we, like, think about the garment a lot beforehand. And that's not necessarily procrastination. That's planning. Right. But I do sometimes think that I overthink the planning of the garment. Right. Now, another thing I tend to procrastinate about, procrastinate, I can't say it today, um, is I just made some costumes Uh for two little boys. And someone else measured the little boys and gave me the measurements. Uh-huh. I never believed them. <laughs> I, I never believed them. And this time, um, well, everything turned out fairly well, but I was making the pants. And I thought, I'm going to add like three more inches than usual to these pants. And it was a good thing because they just fit. So someone had measured the inseam or the outer seam incorrectly. Yeah. I, I think they gave me an outer seam. And sometimes it, it's hard. Like, I actually like an inner and an outer seam both. Uh-huh. That's what I would like mm-hmm. to have as a measurement. Yeah. Um, but it never fails if you don't measure. You know, you don't know what you're working with. I The things that I have procrastinated on, or I don't even know if this is called procrastination. Well, I think that I'll, was more anxiety than yeah. procrastination. So recently yeah. we, well, the, the episode should be out about swim shirts and swimsuits and the UPF fabrics and stuff. And when we got into sort of doing all that, making, you know, talking about the swim shirts and the rash guards right. and stuff, I had this idea of the swimsuit I wanted to make. But I kept thinking and thinking and thinking about it. And then finally what made me make it. Is you needed a swimsuit. Yes. <laughs> is that we were going to the lake. So I got up at five in the morning and made this bathing well, suit. Well, you know, I think it is sometimes hard to make things ahead of time um, in the fact that you can always make something else. Yeah. But when you know you have to have, or say, you know, okay, I'm planning my winter wardrobe and it's today, which is 100 degrees. Right. You know, I you're just, not in this spirit. I can't hardly <laughs> feel it. Um, you know, a lot of designers, they're planning the winter wardrobe when it's winter of the year, year before. before. So I think that might be easier. I think so, too. I think it's nice to kind of have a some kind of plan, maybe. I don't know. But then who, I, you know. Well, but I always change my plan. Yeah. It's a, that, I think that's the other thing. Don't make a plan and think you have to stick to it. Right. Because you don't. And and what you're thinking or what you might change might really be a better idea for you. You know, and we run a sewing store, so I know that a lot of you out there are hobbyists, right? Right. And you have a hard time finding time to sew. <laughs> and you need to know that as people who run a sewing store, we do too, you know? Right. Well, I, I think people think that when you have a sewing store, you get to sew all the time. Yeah. And... <laughs> you sew a lot, but you also don't always sew exactly what you want to sew. Right. You might have 
you know, you might have a class that you have to prepare for, or um, we do, uh, we have a volunteer project <laughs> that we do. So we might be preparing for that yeah. and, and doing that. And fixing people's machines and whatnot and teaching other classes. So I think that that's funny, though, that a lot of times I don't make the... Well, I wore a T-shirt the other day, and um, it wasn't finished around the neckline or the Mallory, sleeves. <laughs> no. Mallory never hems we, her T-shirt that's sleeves. Or, that's not true. That it's not oh, you've true. done it like I, once? Yeah, I've done it, okay? <laughs> but I, of course, I've done it. But but the reason is, I think I had a little bit of yeah, anxiety. show me one. I, I wear that green one all the time, and I have. Oh, it's hemmed? Yeah. Yeah, but that's because it's rayon. It's not knit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, talking about your okay, knit clothing. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So um, that shirt I made last year, like right after Zelda was born, and I needed a shirt that like went up higher on me because I was wearing her in a little wrap, and her chest would be or my her face would be on my chest and it'd get all sweaty, and so I needed this like higher shirt. But then I was like, I'm not. She's gonna. talking about a higher neckline. A yeah, higher neckline. I think people get it. Um, I I wanted a higher neckline. But I was like, I'm not gonna finish this off. What if it? What if I don't like it? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it one day and test it out, and I can do that because it's a knit, like you said. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I'm not, and, and I made it with a slit in the back, right, um, for nursing and flow and fit purposes and all this stuff. And so I just I just slid it up the back. I didn't make it two pieces. It's like I don't know. I, maybe I want it slit higher. Maybe I don't want the slit as high. And we went to a, an art festival, and I had her wrapped around my body you know i was like wearing another right. garment on so i was like i'm not finishing this so anyway i wore it like a couple times and it was okay and then it's been and in my i clo- finish everything <laughs> to superb satisfaction yeah that's right yes. that's right come inspect all zini's clothes uh-huh. yeah um so i got it out of the closet like two days ago uh-huh and i was like well, you were wearing it i saw so it. i really still don't know if this fits because this is like 40 <laughs> pounds later <laughs> so so Valerie's excuse so for I, never hemming anything is, oh, maybe I lost weight. But here we go. Here we go. I wore it, and it fit actually really well. I think I had modeled it off another T-shirt, and it actually fits right. me better. Like, now, now that I'm back to closer to a size that I, like, was before, you know. And I – but I'm not going to hem that one because it's all, like, worn out now. <laughs> so I, I know that to happens, too. Yeah. <laughs> she wears it out, so, oh, I don't have to hem this. Oh, and, yeah. Or sometimes she'll make something and go – here you can have it. It looks like it belongs on you. I like. So you mean it looks like old lady yeah, clothes? Yeah, I've made some old lady clothes on accident before. I gave them to my mom. I'm so yeah, charitable. Yeah, you saw me wearing it, didn't I'm you? So charitable. You've seen me wearing it, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that sometimes that's like a sort of necessity thing. Like I only sew things I like need, you know. Or I I'm rarely <gasps> tempted by someone else's projects just because. Like, I'm not like, oh, I'll just make that cute t-shirt because I saw it. I'm like, Cause well, it's a, I, oh, you I mean someone, that? yeah. Like, when I see something on Instagram, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cute, or I appreciate right, it, or whatever. Right, right. But, like, you know, I don't, I've got the, I have the maritime shorts from Grain Oh, Line she Studio. hemmed that. I'm not going to make oh, yeah, it. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I have these maritime shorts from Grain Line Studio, and I really want to make them, and people are making such cute ones, and they look like they fit really well, but I have gotten around to doing it i'm busy with other things and honestly i haven't wanted to shave my legs this summer so i just been wearing my ginger jeans and so any, but i you know i made the ginger jeans right that's right so that comes up i i procrastinate a little bit i do think that sometimes when i think to myself i'm going to do something and i i'll put it on the class schedule at the shop right Gotta that makes you that, that makes you, you know, to, right. yeah. or if you <laughs> tell everybody, oh, it's Stitcher Social, um, we'll you know, this. next month we're going to have this, and then we have to, you know, poop out a bunch of those things. <laughs> right, exactly. I think that that can help. But I will say, and we have this in the Trello, like making time for sewing, and I think this kind right. of blends in with it. Uh, you do have to schedule in some time if right. you want to. Okay, Ever so. that's one of my other issues. Yeah, go ahead. Because when I start something, I want to finish it in one session. Yeah. And I don't I don't want to, like, cut it out and then put it to the side and then come in and then stay stitch it and finish the seam and then put it to the side. And then, no, I want it, like, now. And so, that means that we'll stay up till 4 well, in the morning. And the right? problem <laughs> is, is I can do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I once I'm, especially once I've, I have a pattern or, you know, I've 
basically, you know, finish the pattern or I know what I want or, you know, I can crank it out in an hour or so. Right. Or I, I don't mind, I don't mind doing a little bit of it, you know, piecemeal if, if I can cut out like three. Right. And then, you know, do this. I do sometimes that. spend more time laying the fabric and going, oh, am I going to combine this with this? Or, mm-hmm. and, and deciding which fabric, honestly, I'm going to use. Yeah. Well, all that prep work and all that thought. Right. Thought prep, I right. think, is one of the things. That well, and another longest. thing that I do that Mallory does not do is I will clean up the studio before I sew because I don't like to sew in a mess, and she doesn't have a problem doing that. Absolutely not. I was, I'm, and I'm I go, sure. I we share a studio now, and it's one of the worst <laughs> things that's happened since she started sewing is that I have to, like, you know, share everything and and not find it um, when I come I up here. I brought you Serger Thread and an Ovation Fabric Guide today. Real, you really did yeah, bring it? I said I got your stuff. It's oh, over there. okay. Yeah, okay. Don't complain. That's a surprise, too, because usually me. I'll say, hey, can you bring me this? And I never see it. Because I'm selling it all. That's right. Uh, <laughs> or, no, wait a minute. Here's the thing. I know you brought me that thread, but are you going to take it back and sell it Yeah, later? maybe, if right. somebody else wants it. Do I have a Zirkle? No, no. Yeah, see? Well, we're out of stock. I sold them all. So. Including the one that was at my house. Yes. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, so, and like I had a destiny too at one time. No, you didn't. You had a oh, crescendo. I had a crescendo. That's <laughs> right. It, you're right. You're right. Where's that? Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? Um, I think Sewing we were talking pro- and procrastinate. Sometimes you come in and you procrastinate because you're looking for your zircle, and <laughs> somebody sold it at your sewing store. Anyway, so I think when I I listened to another podcast and somebody said that they were mentored by someone else and said, just do, you have to do 10 minutes of your whatever, your craft every day. Like, you know, if you think you can't get anything done on it, like spend 10 minutes. And she was a quilter and she said, so one night all I did was like thread up 10 needles so that I could be ready to bind my quilt. And that is nice to have that. I was like, yeah. Well, I, that, that's what, how I yeah. feel about organizing the studio and having things in place and, like, you know, all the threads in one place or, or whatever, is that prepares me to sit down and get it done efficiently because right. I don't like to waste time looking for things or trying to figure out where things are or, or that kind of thing. Well, one time you asked me where the pattern paper was, but it was in that drawer that it you was, labeled. It was, but we had just changed. <laughs> I know, we had just changed. It's like the fourth place the pattern just, paper had been in a year. It was had terrible. To, I just had right. to get it in there. No, that's true. Well, that's why I asked you because I thought maybe you remembered I, where I we put it. I didn't. It. You found it, I think. No, I Anyway, so I Wait till you start to look for the snaps. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I might not tell you where they are. But I think that you can plan to sew, but sometimes the best laid plans. Another thing I do as a garment sewer sometimes is I will do my alterations. That yeah, like I'll just come up to the studio and go, Okay, you know, I'll so I will mark things I need to do. And then I'll have them hanging and ready, you know. Ready to go. Ready, ready to go. Hand, oh, I, oh to... this is a 20-minute thing. I'll do that. I'm really bad about procrastinating on mending and and things and things like yeah. that, like hems. The one thing about mending is you you can, like, you've got, like, five things there. And if it's, it's minor mending or minor alteration or something, it's like, Oh, look, I finished five things that tonight. Is, yes. <laughs> right, right. Now, sometimes it's it's really not that easy you, you because can, you're deconstructing. But you can pick up a whole pair of pants and be like, done. Right, and all right, you did right. was, you know, stitch you did up was the crotch stitch up, whatever, Right, yes. right. All you did was put a button on or something. But that, no, that, that that's very true. It, it, it depends. And sometimes deconstruction is, of course, harder than, you know, constructing. Right, right. And, uh, we, were, we were talking about that the other day. Where do you spend your time in sewing? And I think that's part of the procrastination. You know it's going to take, or the anxiety. Am I going to get it done? Uh, you know, yeah. And or, do, think, or am I going to get tired? Or right. or am I going to keep sewing all night and then I have to go to work in the morning? Right. Which means I only slept for two hours. I will say that once I get, sometimes, I, you know, we like put the baby to bed. Right. And after that, I'm like, oh, I just want to sit here. But if I do like come up to the studio and get started, it, it's kind of like exercising. You know, yeah, if no, you there's, just, honestly, just go get started. For me, sewing has always been zen. Right. And I think it is because... I will have more than one thing going at a time. So, you know, I'll pull out maybe, 
I used to always, when I was sewing mega, mega costumes um, and doing a lot of bridal, and I had a lot of neat and unusual and bizarre fabrics, and, you know, they were, I would always have a crazy quilt going. Oh. So yeah. I could just pull it out and just do that. And that was sort of a free form thing. And I also let me experiment on the stitches with my machine. Right. Yeah. You know, right. So I was doing, you know, not only was I accomplishing something, I was experimenting. I could, and I could experiment with thread or fabric or technique or sometimes I would hand sew because I would, you know, if it's a crazy quilt, you get to sew on beads or do some cruel work or something like that. So, you know, I always had like a backup project kind of that I, I would have going. Like Your those baby blankets, it took me like three years. Decompression project. Yeah. But I, I feel pretty zen when I'm at the sewing machine. If you want to see these crazy quilts, you should come to our store. Because they are, how old are they? I mean, they've got to be like well, there's 10, a date 15 on them. years. Oh, is there a date on them? I should. I, I, I don't know if there's a beginning and an ending date, which I do do on. But like a finish date? Or yeah. Ish. Fin I, I, finish. When I finish. <laughs> when, when I uh, make, I, I'm not a quilter, but when I do make like a baby blanket or a, I, I should say a baby quilt, I make a baby blanket fast. But when right. I make a um, quilt for someone, I always put the beginning date and the end date <laughs> because I usually like started it before the baby was born and then finished it three years later so that they know I thought about them that For whole three time. three years, exactly. Right, right. It was in the right. studio. That's right. And then I explained to the new mother that all of my children took a baby blanket to college with them so it won't go to waste. That's you know? right. That's, That's right. Yeah. You saved it from some years of pretty intense wear there. That's right. The That's right. I think that if you if you could write down that you want to get a project finished by a certain deadline, sometimes it can be good. But yeah. then again, I think that really a lot of a lot of what I see from myself and other people who sew, like through social media and stuff, is is just when a project really sparks your passion. You're right. gonna, you know, and like, then you you're get, in the right. middle of that dress. You're going home and you're working on it. Well, or you're and in the I think of sometimes whatever. you can just like find some fabric. And yeah. you're like, ooh, I'm going to have a skirt out of that. Right, Or right. Uh, it was funny the other day because Becca and I, Becca who works in our shop, she also uh, um, edits our videos and our audios. Uh, we were looking at some fabric or something, and I'm like, boy, I could, like, make a pair of shorts out of that. She goes, ooh, I was thinking a top. So it, it's it's funny how you're inspired. People are inspired by different things. Right, right. You know, we're both inspired by the fabric, but we were going to make something different. I will say that I, when I made the ginger jeans, I posted about it a lot. Right. So and you it forced sort of yourself. Made me think like I better finish these. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta. I, I gotta I, prove I'm not lying. Right. I got through the, like the basting, and it was right. all cool. And then I brought. I actually, we don't have it, Jane. Here, we um, at the house generally, um, and I was using that. Right. machine for top stitching and I like brought it home yeah. here you know right. I brought the floor model here and I sewed on it and and finished it and I thought well people are gonna start asking like where the heck are your jeans That's if right. I just stop at the fly or whatever so well and the other thing nice. you can do is you can have a sewing journal or a sewing notebook and I do this I just have a spiral bound um cute little book I you know got from someplace and I will just write down ideas uh -huh. or draw a picture. And sometimes I have a list going in the back <clears throat> where it's set, you know, sort of out of need or want. Maybe at the top of the list I would have swimsuit cover up because I know I didn't have one and I'm going uh -huh. uh, to the tropics or something. Um, and, I, and it might not get done. And sometimes it does, and it gets checked off. So if I do put a line through it, at least I know I did it. Sometimes I put a line through it because I changed my mind. Yeah, you don't want to make it anymore. Right. Yeah. But I always have, I always, uh, I have that book, and I, you know, I make a sketch here or there, or make a note, or say, or say, you know, what about? Sometimes I'll ask myself a question, like, you know, I know I have a fabric, and um, I'm not by it. You know, it's in the studio, and say I'm in my bedroom. I'm like. What about that, you know, blue knit? Can I use that for such a... So that I'll look at it the next day or the next time I go to the studio. Or do you ever write down something crazy like sewing as religion? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I've got that down here. 
<laughs> well, I uh, I have a Trello board. Wonder so what else I have? Trello is a uh, like a to do list app sort of thing, whatever. And we use it for the podcast. But I did a board for myself for like personal projects, and I made right. the background uh, this unicorn. It's a folder that I got at Staples on clearance, and I took a picture of it, made the background because I feel like I get to finish my personal projects so seldom that they are like unicorns. <laughs> They're very rare. <laughs> can't always see them. Hard to find. Yes, can't see them. Yeah, I can't. And and so any, I you know honestly I haven't looked at my unicorn board. <laughs> so I say whatever you want to do. Now the other thing you can do, which I think is a good idea is because we become inspired and uninspired and we have time and we don't have time and things might get in the way, is uh, have something you can save the project in. Like uh, where you can save the fabric and pattern Right, so that. whether it's one of the two-gallon Ziploc bags or, you know, one of the other things I like is the, the zippered uh, plastic bags that, like, a mattress pad comes in or something. Sheets or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like those can be really, like, you know, kind of neat to keep. Or, you know, some people just use the plastic um, shoebox type things or, you know, whatever they are, plastic containers with the lids. Uh-huh. And what you can do is you put everything in there. Right. You know, the, the the pattern or the magazine and the fabric and the thread and the needle you, yeah, needles you threaded. Yeah, if it's special thread, right. you know, if it's not like just white construction right. thread that you keep near your right. machine or something. I mean, you know? just put everything in there. And then when you do, oh, I really do want to do that. You pull it out and you get I went through a period at one point where I just kept finishing everything that I started. Yeah. And it was amazing. Like, I had really good ideas I'd forgotten forgotten about, and they all turned out really well. Oh, I found my unicorn board in Trello, and it says, nothing's in process. <laughs> Ginger jeans are completed to do. It says, Dolman t-shirts and drapey hoodie. <laughs> There you go. So, but but you've got that written down. I do. I do have it written down. And you know what? If you don't make the drapey hoodie, like by in the next, you know, six weeks, you may not want to make it. Well, that's true. You that's what happens. Sometimes you find things like I. Well, I won't tell the story of my idea for the drapey hoodie because somebody might steal it. That's That's right. Yeah. Um. Uh. But the Newcastle cardigan, the 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 pattern that we we carry by thread theory. I'm sort of like, oh, that sort of does the job of what I wanted the drapey hoodie to be. And that happens, yes. And actually I washed fabric for the drapey hoodie, and I think I'm going to use it actually for that. So there's a, there's a different project there, you know. The, the other thing that happened to me, talk about anxiety, is um, I had wanted to make a lot of loose-fitting pants. <laughs> and I did. And I, but I still want to keep making them. It's like I want to make too many. Like, oh. I don't need that many oh, pairs. Oh. But every time, like, I see a piece of, I'm like, oh, that'd be loose really cool. Pants, but yeah, pants, yeah, no, no, right. Pants, right, uh. right. I'm like, you Stop. really don't need 14 pairs of, I, I mean, how many loose pair of pants do you need? Like, I would think three would be enough. You know, I, 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 you know. I mean, because I don't wear those every day. If I wore them every single day, maybe I could have. 20 I don't know as many pairs I as know want, but huh? it's I I don't want I also just don't see it's anxiety it's stupid it's something it's a roadblock I'm putting up about I'm going don't be so redundant yeah yeah so it's almost like the opposite of procrastinating right you're it's, stopping yourself from right. being productive exactly it's redundant. like it's like <laughs> but it's but it is like I'm making those pants see I'm procrastinating on everything else because I make those pants you're thinking about they this. fit really well yeah. and I'm like got all these ideas so i can procrastinate doing anything else and just like you know buzz out all these pants you should just make all those pants a 40 pair of pants okay and then like put them hang them somewhere and you can go shopping <laughs> oh that's true you can that's go true. Sh- you yes. can make a store yeah all right well i hope you enjoyed our little musings on sewing anxiety and procrastination and i know that you all well, we're gonna have you some know, great stories. I, I've for got us. that raglan sleeve pattern over there. I'm drafting right now, and I'm I'm getting anxious. Oh, okay. I'm so okay. anxious. We'll wrap. We'll we'll wrap. So, up. <laughs> you might not finish it. Uh, we'll wrap this up. But I do want to hear about your sewing procrastination stories. Uh, last minute sewing. I want to hear about them. And I think this is a little good lighten up episode after our many technical it episodes is. in a row. So thank you for listening. I'm so anxious, but so long. 
Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.